What's up, what's up, crew? I finally made it. I had to use my hotspot. It's like the Wi-Fi, I just wanted to take a break, but we ain't gonna have it tonight. Welcome, welcome to everybody who's hopping on. Got my volume up. Got the belly whisperer in the house talking about womb wellness, pelvic relief exercises, all the fun stuff. Hey, bold Brit. Hello, cat. I feel like I just seen some of you guys just a few minutes ago, but we are here. We are in action and roll. So once again, internet is good. Got my hotspot going. I think we're good and connected. Super excited. Hey. Hey. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I was like having a little bit of an internet moment. So I had to like hop on with my hotspot for my phone. Thank God for those overpriced cell phones right they're just I know so I know sometimes <laughs> I hear you I have the same problem with tele rehab I'm like oh no it's freezing I know right you're like I really want to hear what you're saying but what what huh yeah yeah I know. it's like I think it's all the zoom calls the kids the homework everyone's working from home I call it the COVID exactly I think that's what it is it's it's definitely weighing in on the internet sometimes sometimes it's not as strong as it should be but we yeah. got it we got it we'll give it a couple no more it's seconds going good everyone to hop on hop on so you know my thing, I'm like, open up your toolbox because we're going to be putting in the nuggets tonight. I'm super excited about this one, right? I feel like we should have on some workout clothes so we can do all these moves and grooves, but I think I'll be good. <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, should I wear my, my yoga pants and like a sports right. bra? Like I need but, a, you you know, know. like a t-shirt and some stretchy pants. Yeah. That's okay. I got my little romper on. I can romp it. I'll be all right. Oh, well, yeah. You can, you can do that. to everyone who hopped on. I am LJ Johnson, endometriosis health, wellness, fitness, and nutrition coach. We're going to roll it all in there tonight. And I have got the belly whisperer in the house, right? And that's, I want to really like the belly whisperer, right? Like, <laughs> let's talk about wound wellness, all the issues we have as endo warriors, pelvic pain, cramping, tight hip flexors, back pain, sciatic pain. Like, can I just say the word pain, P-A-I-N, that's what we're talking about. And tonight we are bringing in, once again, I see some love. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I can't be the only <laughs> person out here that's had some pelvic pain. So tonight is a good night for anyone with wound wellness issues, not just for endo. If you have fibroids, PCOS, maybe you're just like, my periods suck. Life sucks when I have periods. I need some help. I need some ways. I need some tools. So here's the deal. If you got your toolbox, open her up. You know my thing. If not, Grab a toolbox, grab that imaginary toolbox, get ready to put in the nuggets of truth. Lots of information coming at you. Welcome, welcome, the belly whisperer. Give us the details. Tell us a little bit about you and what you're all about and your passions. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me is I uh, work and live in Huntington Beach, California. I do uh, pe pelvic, visceral, and orthopedic physical therapy, but primarily visceral, meaning working on like organs and then pelvic floor um, physical therapy. Okay. So yeah, I'm really excited to kind of give you the visceral and pelvic um, uniqueness that I use to treat patients because a lot of women, I think, right. go even un undiagnosed with endo. I'm sure, you know, like many women, they go all Absolutely. these years having all this pain and swelling and also misdiagnosis of maybe they get diagnosed with IBS or just pelvic inflammatory disease. And so um, I'm really excited to kind of give some different treatment options. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. I practice in I practice in Huntington Beach at a clinic and just started my belly whisperer um, online uh, tele rehab. And now I'm kind of building it into in person visits because COVID, you know, it's changing a little bit. But yeah, I'm really excited. Absolutely. COVID, the COVID come up as we joke about it, but still very real. It's changed medicine. Yeah. It's changed telehealth. I know there are people that were like, Nope, we don't do telehealth. I think I was, I don't know what podcast I was on, but she was like, yeah, like two weeks later, I was like, yeah, we do, we do telehealth now. <laughs> like, COVID She's like, actually, <laughs> we still want to help you. We still know. I mean, and it's true. Like our pain didn't just leave, right? The pandemic showed up and it didn't just change everything. Like our pain didn't just jump 100. out the window. Like it was still very present, still very much there. So just having the tools. Um, yeah. And the options, I feel like it's, so you said in yeah. Huntington Beach. And I feel like the pain for a lot of pa my patients have, has even increased with like the mental, the emotional, physical stress yes, of COVID, right? The financial responsibilities, mm -hmm. like patients are being unable to work. So no, yeah, tele-rehab right. has been awesome. So I'm really excited to share some of that. Um, 
Amazing. So what do you have for us tonight? Tell us what so, what do we So need? obviously a lot of I mean a, a lot of patients if they don't know what endometriosis is, I'm sure you've talked about it a bunch on your site. I've yeah, seen but too. Absolutely. Maybe someone just hopped on and they're like, maybe they don't have endo. Maybe they're just like, I just heard there were gonna be some free exercises and some help yeah. on here, right? So tell so us it, a little bit about what is endo and what you really specialize in and what you bring to the table as far as helping people with pelvic pain and wound wellness. Yeah, so typically like a one out of every 10 women will have endometriosis. And I would argue that that is probably even higher because it gets misdiagnosed in a lot of right. women. I want to I want to start saying one in five, right? Like that's just an LJ thing. I don't know about the science behind it, but I feel like- <laughs> we, could, we could start it. We could, we could we try could it out, see what happens. Trends. Yes. <laughs> we'll see what WebMD says to us, you know, we can, we'll try it out. But I totally agree. Like I think yes. it's one of those things where- people start having, you know, you get your menstrual cycle, your period, right? And then, you know, you're kind of talking to your friends, right. you know, is my period normal? Like what's normal, like length of time, right? So people with endo, typically mm -hmm. they have longer, um, heavier periods, right? And, um, but not only right. that, you get the bloating, swelling, you're getting all these other symptoms, um, because typically with endometriosis, the right, uterine right. lining, is growing outside of the, the uterus and it gets into the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the bladder, and even the um, small intestines. So typically that causes, because typically during your menstrual cycle, the uterine lining will prepare for a baby, right? To thicken all of that. And then basically we shed that off every, right, every right. month. Well, with people with endo, that 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 inflammation is not, not only occurring in the uterus, but outside, which can then lead to like pockets um, right. of adhesion, uh, scar tissue, mm -hmm. even create cysts. So you get all these, this pain, right? So how do we, how do we manage it? Right. And I think what you're doing is awesome, right? right? right. It's diet, it's exercise, it's finding the right um, doctor, uh, maybe for a surgical intervention, like laparoscopic um, to avoid, right, you know, right. people getting early hysterectomies, which is, you know, something they typically want to avoid now Those, that, you know, those women that just got Absolutely. it because they didn't really know. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah. So one of the things that I do, um, one of the, the best things that I like to do with people with uh, endometriosis or abdominal pelvic pain that's mm -hmm. triggered by my myofascial issues um, are right. wands. So I have my cool wands here. So let me just pop these out. Wow. I know. I'm a big Harry Potter fan, but like She's these like, aren't as cool. These the aren't sea. as cool as Harry <laughs> Potter. So what's nice about wands, right? Different different sizes, different shapes. Um, they're great for, instead of using, typically as a physical therapist, we'll use our index finger or maybe even our middle finger when mm. we're doing internal vaginal or internal rectal work to work on mm -hmm. actually doing trigger point, uh, trigger point release on the, the muscles. So imagine right. your pelvic floor is like every other muscle. Like if you, for instance, have a tight jaw muscle, um, masseter, for instance, you right. can do trigger point really sinking in. Same thing with your finger um, internally, right. but even better, you can do it on yourself with a wand, which is super nice because if you're somebody that has pelvic inflammatory disease or endo and you have a flare up and you're just like by yourself, you can't reach your healthcare provider or anybody for, right. you know, quick relief. You can just like whip out a wand and, you know, do some trigger point release, but it's really important to to have somebody that has used these before to walk you through it, just so you know, because it can be a little the like, where do you put this? Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, yeah. obviously there's not a lot of places to go once you, once you insert this, but you don't, you know, you don't want to be hitting too high up. It could just, you know, be uncomfortable. So. Absolutely. But yeah. yeah. But there, it's very powerful. I know trigger point. I mean, obviously with pelvic release, but like you said, I had some TMJ, I was in a car accident and a broken oh, jaw wow. and all that stuff. And it's interesting. Like I had to do a bunch of acupuncture and it was like that muscle would get so tight. There were days I couldn't open my mouth. Right. And then other days oh. now you can see, I can run my mouth a million miles an hour, but when that thing <laughs> would tighten up. And so it was, you know, it's really like, realizing yeah. like where those points were and to relax that. And it's like, you never knew, like you just go to the dentist and you're like, Oh, my jaw sore. But I'm talking about like some days, could not open my mouth like it's yeah. just ridiculous it, yeah and you don't re you don't realize it until like you got in a major accident where it's like wait I can't right. yawn without pain I can't chew I can't Didn't bite like what thing, right 
<laughs> yeah. I didn't even oh, know until that thing was like, uh, I can't open my mouth. I can't eat. I can't drink. What am I doing? Yeah. I mean, I went to some pretty intense physical therapy and trigger point is huge. So once you get the wands, like you're saying, making sure you have some education, have some, you know, a background, don't just grab them and start doing whatever. That's definitely yeah. going to help your situation, especially like you said, if there's a lot of inflammation out there. Yeah, and then these are great too. You, you can even use these externally if your therapist shows you how to palpate your um, pelvic floor um, externally. You can even use it then or also using like um, massage balls. There's so many different devices to do trigger point release. So if you're someone that's like had trauma or you're just not comfortable with, with doing that to yourself, there's so many options for trigger point release, but it's really such a good tool for people with um, abdominal pelvic issues, especially endo or um, adenomyosis. I can never say that one right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Yes, but, and then also, none of them are fun. I right? know. I know. I know. I, they always, all these long terms, I always like get accused. I'm like, did I say it right? Dysmenorrhea? Like, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> can we <laughs> yes, make this more simple? A lot of them. Um, I know, but right? yeah, so could we could we and could we find a treatment while we're at it? Like if we just find a cure, I mean, if anyone wants to squeeze know. that in, we're okay with that too. I know. Hopefully like it seems there's been a really good movement right now going on though with like women's health, especially with more funding, more Absolutely. education. So that push is going to be, I think it's going to be so helpful in like the years to come with, you know, getting more mm -hmm. help to people or like early screening for like teenagers. Cause I think that's when, that's when it's mo the most crucial, in my opinion, in terms of just like, right. you're already navigating your youth, right? Like how awkward school is meeting boys. And now you've got like this going on. Totally. Right, right. It's, it's a lot. It's a heavy, I mean, as a, as a child and as a parent, right? Because then our heart goes out. I mean, we feel horrible that my, you know, my daughter had some issues and I felt horrible when she was in pain and she had to come home and she was bloated and miserable and throwing up and passing out. And just, you're just like, geez, like, it doesn't have to be this way. And so that's why I'm always like, once again, you know, open up the toolbox and let's see. Yes. So what do you have for us? What are some things that we can do? More tools. So I'll just, I like have all these tools. So I'll just kind of go through it. So simple tools. Um, I'll leave my best for last. Simple tools that I think everyone should have in their house. Um, oh, can you see this? A heating pad. Yep. It's just yes. simple electric. Um, love it. If you don't have a, because some people don't have a bathtub or if you don't have a bathtub, you can use a sits bath. Um, I have one in my bathroom, but it's basically you just put like a little warm bath over your toilet seat and you can sit, um, sit on that. And it just five, 10 minutes, you know, warm water will relax the pelvic floor, especially if you're in spasm um, or right. if you're someone that not only has pelvic inflammatory issues, but you have hemorrhoids, fissures. Um, I mean, it just that sits bath or a hot bath can be something useful, but a heating pad, right? Like over your stomach on your right, low right. back. Um and even like your upper back and neck, like a lot of people with pelvic issues, I talk a lot about this on my page, have TMJ and neck or upper cervical dysfunction. So using heat. What's the connection between the two of those? Like what, uh, what is that? It's basically, if you can imagine, the main, the main things are we, because of our nervous system, the way the nerves kind of come right. out of the brain and how everything kind of branches out, that like craniosacral connection so if you have tension kind of up here in the nerves, it can pull and cause tension and issues down there. And not only oh, neural okay. tension, but also because you can imagine all of our organs, all of our musculoskeletal system is connected by like uh, fascia or connective tissue that anchors like our muscles to our bones. And then you, right, you have all this fluid inside that keep the, the organs there. Those fascial connections mm -hmm. um, also cause there to be a connection, right? Like if you lift, you can even test it on yourself. Like if you reach your arm above your head, if your lats are really tight, you right. may even feel a pull in your hip or like in your pelvis. So there's yeah, just those fascial will. connections. I also think there's a and huge- And that's so important, like you said, that everything is connected. Cause I think some people are like, oh, you know, I just have pelvic pain or, oh, I just have a really hormonal, you know, bad migraine today, but it's like, okay, but that's all connected to your period, right? That's all connected to your hormones. So 100. those headaches and that pelvic pain and that sciatic nerve, like you said, all of that stuff is connected. So not to write it off. I mean, you could be having a shoulder issue. I know even after surgery, exactly. the gas and the pressure, that is all connected. And some, I mean, it's just being aware of that. It's true. I, I just worked on a patient the other or yesterday and I released something in her left pelvis and she was like, I feel my like tension in, in my shoulder and my neck is like completely gone. And it's like, I didn't work on her shoulder, but wow. she felt the release there. 
so it's really, really interesting how there those connections. And then also too, um, I think a lot of people that have pelvic, um, chronic pelvic pain, chronic abdominal pain are, are at a higher prevalence for clenching and, and tightening because yes. of all the pain the you're tension. in. I mean, exactly. You right. hold that tension in. Um, so there's, there's lots of correlations why that is, but those are the main ones. Okay. Um, and then after, okay, so then going off the heating pad, um, Oh, and then also other great tools too. If you're somebody, um, let's say for instance, you know, you're somebody that has endo or an ab abdominal pelvic disease, inflammatory pelvic issue going on, and you're having pain with sex, which can be super like uncomfortable, you know, it can, it, it kind of like is hard with intimacy with your partner. Um, a really good tool Absolutely. besides the right. wand are dilators, because that can help with opening up, stretching the muscles if, if it's caused by tightness. So like really cool looking and I like these like bright colors. Um, we don't, too bad we don't have one to match your shirt. Um, I know, right? <laughs> me neither. I'm kind of close. We'll take, we'll take the green, but it's cool. You have different sizes, right? So let's say you're somebody that really suffers from having low belly, back, sciatic, or um, pelvic pain during, you know, intercourse. You can try to incorporate okay. using maybe dilator use before um, before, like, let's say 30 minutes before leaving it in and in working that up. So it depends on your specific body, what type of, like how long, what size you would use. That's another thing you'd want to work with a therapist for, but these right. are great, so this sounds great. Like something that once you get tight, you know, connected to someone like yourself or someone else that's educated in this, they can tell you what to get, how long of a session. So, I mean, we're not saying to run out to Amazon, buy all these tonight and then yes. start doing your own thing. Like you need to have some guidance and some awareness with that. Yeah, and exactly 100%. And once you have somebody they can walk you through, you can kind of like talk about when I try this position, right? Like doing um, sex position, sex positions that are the, the that are typically the best for people that have pain with sex, you know, well, oh, you know, okay. when the girl women on top, right? Because when you're on top, you can control how much of your body weight you're pressing down, right? Um, spooning is another great one because you're lying on your side typically you you can let your pelvic floor muscles relax or lengthen um another great tip um and then also if you let's say you really want to do um like doggy style putting pillows or like a bolster underneath your belly and you can like kind of keep your hips slightly higher it changes the angle when right. um, you're having intercourse and that and that's another thing uncomfortable right right exactly right. and um so there's lots of cool ways and then my favorite is you know no penetration sex where you do like all the fun stuff outside because i think that's something that's really uh underused a lot of people think that you have to do all the other stuff but really intimacy and all that for right, for right. sex so those are great tools um for if you're having if you're somebody with like I said endo or pelvic issues with cr chronic pain or um, stiffness and then one of the things that like I think is something that I do which I kind of got the belly whisper idea from is mm -hmm. because I do a lot of stuff with my hands viscerally but also with cupping so um, which is very powerful I've had cupping as well I'm like man you, I must I've had a lot of problems. I've used a lot of this stuff. <laughs> no, so have I, though. You are not alone. Trust me. This stuff is great. I think, and the cool thing is, is so this is, so everyone always asks me what, you know, what type is this? These are silicone, right? These right. aren't the glass. T traditionally, cupping therapy is the heated glass that creates negative glass, pressure, right? right? Which then when you have the negative pressure, it can like lift the tissues and that's what um, helps to pull it up. Mm -hmm. Uh What's nice about these is you can use these literally all over your body. And what I like to do the most is I have a specific method that I use. Um, I go in a certain order and I have certain techniques depending on what's going on, but mm -hmm. I use it along the belly. So it just depends what I find, but um, it's super, it's super helpful when you're trying to increase circulation into an area, fresh blood flow, because that carries, um, uh, fresh blood flow with oxygen, right? Oxygen is right. what we need for healing our tissues. So uh, great. Also so what great are some for of the lifting. other benefits of doing the cupping? Like, I mean, what would that look like? Is if someone came in for a session, like, tell yeah. us a little bit more, like, what would that look like? So basically, if you came in for a session, it would be, I would go through a little bit of like, what's going on? What are you experiencing, right? Constipation, pelvic pain, sciatica, what do you tell me? 
And then from there, I look at your posture, um, check musculoskeletal posture first, check diaphragmatic breathing, one of my most favorite tools mm. for all things belly and pelvic. And then I would maybe, for instance, go after doing my objective assessment of like, maybe check for flexibility and strength. Um, I would check tissue, right. right? So I have my hands on your belly, for instance, I have my hands here, I'm going to move the tissues in certain directions, side to side, maybe up and down, check for okay. diastasis, I might check for check for diastasis along the linea alba. And then from there, it's like, Oh, you have what is this scar? And then they'll be like, Oh, I had an appendectomy or Oh, I've okay. had a a total, I had a hysterectomy, but it was laparoscopic. Um, so from there, what's cool is a lot of women now have their hysterectomy um, done laparoscopically where they go in vaginally and remove it. And they're all like, uh -huh. oh, but I shouldn't have, they, they always say, well, I shouldn't have any scar tissue. They just went in and took it out, which is, you think when the doctor tells that to you, you're like, hmm, this seems pretty simple. But then like, right. they're, they're removing they're an organ. So yeah, your body's gonna like, that your organ, you know, it's still kind of, you know, it, I like to think that like the organ spirit or like the organ soul is still there. And that's why you have like, you know, pain, but like you have scar tissue that is kind of formed around that, right? Where, where it was anchored to specific um, connective tissue. Right. So, so a lot of women will be like, they, they'll have pain, but then I'll go in there and dig either internally, but also just with my hands or with this. And you'll feel what happens is you put this on the skin, right? I'll use my arm right. for example. And you'll move it around and you'll feel like crunching, popping. You'll yes, even maybe like go, the ooh. And the scar yes. Yeah. And they'll go, oh, that feels, oh, I don't know about that. Like, and some people go, oh, that feels great. And it's, it's really interesting to see. But mostly once you get done, what happens is as you keep doing it, you realize, wait, I'm not feeling those restrictions or oh, I'm not hearing that cracking and popping. And so start releasing some of that, which is interesting yeah. because those in itself can cause pain and then put a flare on top of it. Or maybe it's like you're ovulating and everything's all tight and you've yes. got these crackle parts. I mean, it's like the whole literally like the snap crackle pop, like it's just very <laughs> tight and painful. Right. And cupping is it's huge. Like I never even thought about cupping in the pelvic area. I mean, once again, from a car accident, I've had it on my back my yeah. shoulders, like I had a shoulder injury at me. And it was interesting, like, it was also for me, and I don't know if it's the same when you do the cupping on the abdominal area, because maybe you don't do it as, um, as tight. But I know that my doctor, like, there were parts of my shoulder that would be like, maybe she'd do it all on a Monday, mm -hmm. some of them would be gone. And then others, she's like, Oh, it would be there maybe five, six, seven, or I'd go to my next appointment, and it was still bruised. And she's like, that's where the blood is stagnant. And that's where it's not flowing through. And so it kind of let exactly. us know. So does the same thing happen when you do it in the pelvic region? Like, do they get some stagnant parts where you're like, oh my God, six days later, you're like, people are like, what's your bruise? And you're like, oh, now we know it's cupping. But it's sometimes like, I think if the blood flow is good for me, I mean, I can be in and out, have the tiniest bruise and be moving on. And But when it's stagnant or like I've got a piece of scar tissue, yes. that thing can look like I've been beaten just that morning. And it's like, no, I got cupping like eight days ago. And it's still like predominant bruise, tender, yeah. like the blood is just not moving through there whatsoever. It's true. Like you, you nailed it like right on the head. That's exactly what it is. When you have those areas that get red instantly or, or tend to bruise for longer periods of time, it's right. because that tissue was the most unhealthy in the sense right. that it was bound down. You had restrictions, blood flow was lacking. So now, um, it, you know, it, it's able to heal now that you've broken it up. So the goal is I always tell people, I like to think of scar tissue, like a crosshatch. Okay. And what happens is, when you break it up, it releases. Now it's like, oh, swelling, maybe it's bruising. Mm -hmm. And then once it heals and reforms, it's nice and normal again. And you that's healthy, contractible tissue. When you have okay. scar tissue, it's like this and it doesn't bend well. So I, that's exactly what I envision when I when you're doing something like okay. cupping. Um, like cupping. So you help. have to release the scar tissue. But even let's say if you went in for an appointment on a Wednesday, or let's say, you know, you went on an appointment for Wednesday, you do the cupping, you do the work, it's not going to automatically just be perfect, right? Like all you did was kind of each appointment release the scar tissue. And then once it's released, you've got yeah. to release the inflammation and everything has to come back together. So that's exactly like, once again, it's a process, it's not going to be an overnight. But I mean, to think of people have had multiple procedures, multiple things happen down there, traumas, you know, surgeries, falls, slips, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, yeah. all of that scar tissue down there is really, really you know, causing a lot of tension down there. 
And, it, and exactly what you said, if somebody comes in, you know, oh, more like, oh, they just had a hysterectomy like three months ago, it's going to be so much easier right. for me to break that up and get you healed. Like maybe it maybe it only takes two, three treatments versus somebody who's had multiple surgeries, has never had any therapy, and they come to me five, six, ten years later. It, it's going to help a lot, but it may I, take yeah. more treatment sessions. So. Um, that's a really great point that you brought up. It's going to, everyone's like progress is really going to vary on their diagnosis, but um, it, yeah, exactly. But typically, you know, these treatments really do well. I mean, I see, like I said, within one visit, you do really feel a big difference. Um, okay. And then another thing besides the cupping. So the cool well, thing about cupping. A quick question with the cupping. Would cupping yeah. help reshape or fluff breast like after explant? Um, it, my question for explant is meaning you had them removed or you had an, um, implants. I'm not sure what the, like you had them removed, I'm assuming. I'm guessing they meant removed, but type yeah. in the question box, just in case we're on the wrong track. The I would say, I would say it's funny. People always ask me that. Can you make me taller? Can you make my, yes, my tummy, said, my tummy yes, wrinkles removed. go away? I think it's removed. It is. She said, yes, removed. Yes. So in terms of fluffiness, um, it's not necessarily going to make anything fluffier, but it's going to make things move more. So like, let's say, um, let's say you're wearing a push-up bra, right? And you want to push your breasts higher. Um, you can release some of the adhesions. Like for instance, I love working on patients after plastic surgery because then there's they can some actually move, right? Yes. Because adhesions is what's holding it down. It, and a lot of the people get plastic surgery for like, um, breast, like breast cancer. I want to do a, a, a post on that because it's breast cancer awareness, but a lot of women get the right. double mastectomy and then they, they kind of like cut them here to here, here down, right? They, and it wraps all the way around their mm -hmm. back. Um, and so by breaking it up, working on that scar tissue, it really it gives them a lot of shoulder range of motion, helps with lymphedema, swelling. But in terms okay. of fluffiness, I wouldn't say it's gonna it's gonna necessarily fluff, but it it's gonna bring fresh blood flow to the area. So it's I think it would help in different ways. But you would want to see somebody to get like an actual um, evaluation done, in my opinion. Okay, okay. Thanks for answering that. That was a good question. Yeah, that was a good one. I'd love to get. I'd love to get a breast lift so I can <laughs> let my girls go free, but I'm scared. Oh, don't be afraid. I would say let them go free now. What are you waiting for? Let them go. <laughs> she said be 2020. Free, 2020, right? You're working from the home, right? Let them free. Exactly. Yes. I mean, yeah. I think, I think, uh, yeah, I don't think you necessarily need to get a lift. I would always say if you're going to, if you want to get a lift too, like really, you know, get educated, do some research, talk with friends because patients that that have had the surgery for 20 years are really good to talk to versus somebody who's had it for three months so you just get a range of friends and people you know right okay. right and this is them just saying that there's a lot of women in the breast implant illness group because um, people do get you know implants and have reactions have allergies or whatever you know things that are going on and so i guess that's a common topic on how to release those adhesions so that whatever oh, interesting you have, you know, you're able to, like you said, like putting it in a push-up bra, if it's all kind yeah. of glued down, you can't even lift it up. Thanks. Yeah. Ladies. All right. Latoya, That's good questions. Great. Brooke, you can direct message me. Those are really good questions. Um, but yeah. Uh, and, and another thing for working on scar tissue is tools. So on my post, you've seen me working with silver tools. They're yes. basically called instrument I've assisted. The sports recovery center here in Denver. Oh, you and you've had these to too. Town on people, like I see them like wrenching all over. Yeah, them. It, it's yeah. These intense. ones are. I've had it done once. It's it's yeah. not for the week. No. Yeah, this is like a child's play compared to these, in my opinion. Yes. In my opinion, like I have one in my in my clinic that is like a handlebar, and people will be like, "What are you doing with that?" And I'm like, "Just lie on your stomach. <laughs> It'll Just be okay." Come on over. I mean, and it's intense. It's kind of like when you compare acupuncture to dry needling totally different right like yes. I do dry needling that's like way more aggressive you know acupuncture I'm just like laying there letting the energy I'm like oh I feel the tingle yeah. the dry needling is like oh your shoulder needs to be released great we're dropping a needle and they're like twisting <laughs> the muscles and you're like oh but I'm telling you it works and that's the one when, that's where I would say no pain no gain that one when it comes to dry yeah. needling and that with working with the tool they're, they are working those adhesions, right? It's kind of like when you get the massage stick and you're working on your IT bands 
for me. Like yeah. it is very uncomfortable, but afterwards, like it's like total relief. Cause if I keep my eyes tight, it starts pulling on my hip and starts making me like, oh my gosh, is the pelvic pain? It's like, no, the pelvic pain's not coming back, stupid. You've been working out for two weeks and haven't stretched your IT bands. Like that's what's going on. Or I know. start pulling on my knee and I'll feel it in my knee as far as knee pain. Oh, long before it pulls on my hips if my it bands get really tight yeah yeah that lateral knee pain you yeah. brought up a really good point too a lot of um patients with uh chronic inflammatory like abdominal pelvic issues mm -hmm. a lot of us really like to do like high level stuff like running spin class we the hit class we what love it right no, i think a lot of us are just like those i mean i don't know about you but i'm type a like go 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 stress yes, out too much and we have a really hard time like down regulating our nervous system, right? We're like sympathetic, go, go, go. And that's right. why a lot of us have IBS issues like me. I have IBS and it's because I'm standing and walking and eating as I'm running down the stairs. That's no way to eat and digest. Right. But we're of, telling of our course. clients, we're like, sit yeah. down, chew, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Be you're calm. To stretch. And then I'm like, yeah. workout done, sweaty clothes off. I'm not even taking a shower. On to the next. Move it on. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no rest. No rest yes, and so no we're, digest. We're all guilty. Boot camp is my favorite. Yes. And boot camp, I mean, if you're doing those high intensities, like even if it's like OTF yes. or F45 or anything like that, I mean, those muscles get tight and it, it's the referral pain. Like I said, the IT yes. pain, my knee will start talking to me long before I'll even be like, oh crap, I haven't stretched my yeah. IT, right? Those knees will definitely start letting me know. So what are the, some things that you can do with that tool? And then what other referral pain? Like maybe some people are like, okay, I have pelvic pain, but I also have this pain, I don't know, on my shoulder, or I have this pain here. Like, what are some other referral points, like you said, you know, the shoulder and the back coming yeah. from the pelvis that they need to start being more aware of, and what can they do once they kind of make that connection? A big, a big one that a, a lot of my patients, especially with endometriosis, the typically verbalize is that they have sciatica or this deep hip flexor pain, this yes. deep, like it's going to your ovary, like, or this mm -hmm. deep pain in your low back that wraps around the front and then goes into your ovary. Like your iliac, are, like when yes. you have to massage that and they, oh my God, it's yeah. like, like, oh, they're, it's like, it just makes you cringe. <laughs> yeah, those yes. are the, some of the biggest referral sites because mm -hmm. of where a lot of their endometriosis or that uterine tissue grows outside. Right. Um, and what's, what's really cool is I find that when I'm doing my internal work, that's why I think the wands are so important. When you're doing internal work, you can literally be like, okay, I'm on, you know, coccygeus, which is a pelvic floor muscle, right? Um, right. Or I'm on, I'm on obturator internus, like a hip muscle. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's going down my leg. Like that's exactly my pain. It's and it's recurring. crazy. Yeah. And it's crazy because you can, you can lay them on their stomach. You can check their spine like a normal, like orthopedic therapist will kind right. of check mobilize the spine and kind of check, you know, SI alignment, but and get really not too much information. And then you go inside and you're just like, wow, this, this is exactly the muscle that's causing a lot of your issues. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a big one. And then what's cool about the cupping is for a lot of women to because um, when their symptoms are the worst is typically when they're um, on their period, I, tr I tend to not do a lot of internal work because you already have swelling in there. You already mm -hmm. have inflammation. So what's great is using these on people's like lumbar paraspinals or their low back muscles. Oh, oh it's, okay. It's fantastic because if you can imagine, imagine like um, your lower abs or your low belly has a corset around you and those corset right. are like tissues. That's when you stretch the back, it helps to loosen up some of the restrictions in the front. Again, those myofascial connections. Correct. So it helps to relieve some of that frontal low belly, low um, pelvic floor pressure. It's awesome. So, cause a lot of people go, well, I'm on my period. Like you can't do anything for me. And I'm just like, oh no, there's, there's so much we could do. Cause you can release that back, which is still pulling yes. on those hip flexors, pulling on all of that. Like you said, it's like a corset. It's like, there's, it's cool to have a corset, but if you got on two sizes too small, it's going to be super uncomfortable. Exactly. All day long, it's going to be extremely painful. So if you have all that tension, um, I mean, sometimes it's like, it's, sometimes it could be these, you know, simple things right here and not just necessarily a flare. I mean, it yes. could still be a womb wellness issue. You know, maybe there's some stretching. So back to, I'm like, let's go back to the wand here for a second. So what yes. are some things that they can do wands. externally with the wand? Um, you know, and obviously like once they get more education and knowledge and everything. So what you can do is, okay, so, um, a lot of people, let's say a lot of women will experience like pain spasms in their like vaginismus right spasms of the pelvic floor or even like 
they'll have rectal spasms, which is called like um, proctalgia, where they feel like yes. they're sitting Very on a golf painful. ball. Yeah, yes. so it feels like there's a golf ball right on their sit bone or where their coccyx is. So what you can do if, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a ball you can sit on, but with this, you basically would have to come down. And you can imagine if you put your hands underneath your bottom, you have your two little sit bones, those little right. kind of knobby things. You yeah. kind of have to go inside of those and a little bit deep and that's where you sink in so you can technically use like I can lift my my cheek up and I can use my fingers in this type of direction and sink into that hammock if you can imagine the hammock pelvic floor um, okay. you can release it that way but you can use a wand so you can actually lie on your back which is nice and it's because it has so much more of an extension you don't have to like lean full right it's very awkward to kind of like go around your stomach and right so right. you can you can use something like this so for instance because this pelvic wand has more pointy end i'll do external trigger point excuse me with this end because it's much more round and and i can use it to be more pinpoint so okay. that's how i have people i'll have them do external so with this direction trigger points is what you're saying yeah. Okay. So I'll have them use maybe this end of the wand on the, uh, here versus this one will be uh, more for internal. Okay. So, um, oh, great. Uh, but yeah, so the, the wand, wands are awesome. Um, and then also too, it, it, just because you were mentioning TMJ pen, I wanted to mention this when you were talking, you can actually use cups on your face. Like, I know this really? is like super weird. Oh, I know. You guys this have is the minis, right? You got the little babies. So it's kind of cute, right? Like a little tattoo. No, but like people, I was you just speaking with job, somebody. You're like, what happened? Right? I know. You're like, I know. I know. Holistic, <laughs> holistic treatments. <laughs> One of my patients was like, um, it looks like you gave me hickeys. And I was like, uh, don't, don't tell anybody it was me. <laughs> right, right, right. Just don't let them know you had an appointment today. That's interesting because the smaller ones, it's just also nice because I've always had the ones with the fire and the glass. But then I also bought one online. I mean, I'm not a little embarrassed to say this now that I've got a professional on here. But here, You're this fine. is what happens when you go on to eBay. And now, so there, there's one that's like, I can put it on my back and there's like a, like a pump because I can't yeah. suction it, right? Like I can put it on my back. I know which like, one you're talking about. I yes, know exactly. Like, and you yeah. can't read any of the instructions. <laughs> is it like really loud too? It's like, it's like making I, like I a weird puppy noise. in Chinese. Now I did spend some time in Japan. So I was like, this is clearly not kanji that I'm familiar with. But you know what? I was smart enough how to figure out. I mean, you really don't need to be able to read the instructions. But you, like, put it on there, and there's, like, this, yeah. like, pump. And I've had my kids, I'm like, just put it back there. Pump it up. It'll be fine. And it's so funny. But I'm like, <laughs> yeah, clearly there's so many different things you can do. Now, would I have thought of buy buying those? I don't think I've seen that one. I've got, like, yeah. the, the self-pumper upper version. I repeat, yeah. this is a cupping system that I'm talking about. But, uh, yes, I do possibly have that one. I may have No, that's those. cool. I mean, <laughs> I, I've seen that one, too. The cool thing about these ones, though, is because of the silicone, they slide. So I should probably right. just show you so you can get a little idea. Which would be so nice for instance, if you have adhesions, you can kind yes. of pull, you can suction up and down. And that's kind of like when you go, I know like when I go to Chinese medicine, it would be heat and she would kind of work her way up and down. And I definitely, yeah. I couldn't do it with the one where I'm like suctioning for dear life, but that you could slide and move. Yeah, and I like it better because I typically don't like to, like usually when I use this, I don't bruise people too much actually. I actually just move it around and what's nice. cool is I have specific motions with the technique that I use where I might be having one hand going this way and the other. I have multiple cups going and it's really interesting. I have different techniques. So it's almost like a, I call it a mobilization with movement. So right. um, it's similar to an orthopedic technique that you can use. Like for instance, um, let's say you jammed your finger, you can apply pressure on the joint to help with roll and slide, which are kind of like the mechanics right. of the joint and then go okay now flex your finger as i do the mob same thing i'll apply them on people's neck and then i'll say okay now stretch your upper trap to, right. the, to the right which is so, kind of like when you come. go to pt they take you through all these series of exercises and i think sometimes exactly when you know pelvic physical therapy is more popular now but maybe like i know when i was dealing with it like no one was like you know it was just like pain meds pain meds pain. no one even mentioned stretching and as a trainer they're probably like oh you're already stretching Little did you know that was like the only thing I wasn't doing. I was teaching a zillion classes and never stretching unless I had to, right? Um, oh, man. And then we have a place here in Denver. It's a sports recovery center. And so, um, I mean, obviously, they don't do like the, you know, pelvic floor with the wand internal and all that. It's like very external. But they have some really great tools there to help yeah. you relax your muscles. And it makes a huge difference. But once again, it's like you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And like, 
That's a really great point too. One of the things that you have to do if you are somebody that has endo or like a um, like a chronic illness that has inflammation that happens a mm -hmm. lot is stretching more. You have to, you, you really have, have to be choice. like, right. Yeah. You really got to be like, okay, sitting on a spin, sitting on that bike and spin class is going to put pressure right on my pelvic floor, which can, which can cause even more pain, even though you right. want to, even though like you want that sweat and like that, right. that, you know, there's those endorphins, you, you really it. have to go that, you, yeah, you have to go to that restorative yoga. So you really have to like find what works for you. Like, let's say you do high intensity stuff three, four times a week, mm -hmm. but then you switch to, you add stretching three to four times. So you, you kind of find what works for you. And I think that's nice with what you have your program, um, getting kind of like on a regimen where you, where you make sure you're focusing not just on the exercise, but stretching your diet, right. hormones, hormone replacements, and all of that are huge. It makes a big difference. Yeah. So this is awesome. So do you offer any type of telemedicine? Um, I think yeah. we're talking about the COVID come up. I mean, where can people find you? What are some things that they, I mean, maybe someone's like, hey, she's, she's in Huntington Beach with the sunshine. Maybe they're here in Colorado in the mountains and the snow. Like, what can you do for us Coloradans over here? What oh my gosh, I, I just want to come over there and go snowboarding. I want to just, we'll just take a little road trip and go snowboarding. That sounds great. Oh, um, we'll have to connect. We'll have to mask up and get together. Yes. I know. Six feet apart, we can do this. Um, no, but yes. I, the thing is, a lot of people are like, oh, how can you, you know, how can you do telehealth with, you know, pelvic or visceral? But really, there's so much you can do with the telehealth. And uh, luckily for me, I offer um, not only like 60 minute, 30 minute tele rehab, but even for people that are financially kind of burdened right now, or maybe they're busy because they've got like four kids or, you right. know, they're, they're, Life. you know, they're not, they just want 15 minutes and kind of figuring out, okay, is there something wrong with me? Is there not? And they just kind of want to talk for about 15 minutes. So that's really nice because then it's like, Hey, you should find somebody in your area or, um, you know, Hey, maybe we can, if I feel like I can help somebody with tele rehab with what they have going on, there's so right. much we can do. And then there's times when I go, Oh, you know what? I think you really need to see a provider or you really need to go in okay. um, because of X, Y, and Z. But yeah, I offer um, tele rehab on my website, which is great. And then um, I also with people that are locally for me that I know I do, I've been getting a lot more referrals with word of mouth. So I do in home visits, which is kind of nice because it's wow, that's really one on one. Yeah. Yeah, with we I can we can wear masks. It's it's an enclosed setting, and so it's not bad. Um, and then also I have my full time other job where I work at a clinic, and I specialize in the women's health or uh, pelvic floor there, and that's in Huntington Beach. So it's really cool when people reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm always like I always give them the options. I go, look, if you want to pay cash and go through me, great. If you're a local in Huntington and you have the insurance that our company takes, go ahead and go ahead and schedule an appointment. Nice. The only okay. Yeah, the only main difference is when people schedule with me one on one, they're going to get just me. It is better healthcare in this sense. It's more individualized. Absolutely. You know, I get your direct attention, right? When you're in a clinic, sometimes you get me for 15, 20 minutes, and I'm still there, but I have, you know, there may be four or five other people there. So it's just a different setting. And I, I really think with what I offer with the cupping, with the belly, um, techniques. It's really unique. And it is really right. nice to have that one on one, even if it's only for 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, I have offer well, and like you just said, a 15 minute appointment. I mean, like you said, because there are a lot of people right now, maybe, you know, the COVID come up, you're still in the come up, right? Like it's the COVID come yeah. up, everyone's budget is different, your income is different, your expenses are probably the same, if not more, but the money coming in may be a little less. And the fact that you understand that and you're able to relate to people and meet them where they're at, like, I haven't heard yeah. of anyone, you know, like, I know, I've been discounting on my programs and things like that. But the fact that you're like, we can do a 15 minute session. And like you said, once again, you're not just doing it for the money trying to book as many telehealth as you can. Yeah. Money, it's like, hey, I can help you or you know what, hey, LJ, I think you need to go actually see someone. Let me get you connected. I mean, that's taking it a step above people. And that's what I'm always talking about your ride or die partner, right? Like a doctor yeah. or a physician or a healthcare professional that actually cares, right? Not just come, come, come to the appointment. I have no you know, intention of making you better or helping you. I mean, a 15 minute appointment. That's awesome. I, mean, I don't know what the rate is for that. But that's great that you offer yeah, it's that. 25 bucks, 25 bucks. And oh, my yeah, God. Okay. And, and you still get I send you a home program. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, we I send you a home program process. and everything. So I still try to give you like a treatment, even though it's, you know, after I, I put together a home program and That's yeah, amazing. I'm, 
I'm, I mean, I love, it's nice to make money, but I also really, I'm really passionate about helping people. And I mean, I have my own history with IBS, being right, diagnosed with story. Crohn's, right. celiacs, um, and, you know, having a misdiagnosis, not really know what's going on. So I can relate to like what those people are feeling. You feel like, am I crazy? Is this in my head? And it's a really like lonely, scary place to be mentally. Absolutely. So like, I, I really, I'm like really passionate about what I do and I love it. So I'm really happy that like I can, you know, hopefully I want everyone to have an opportunity, right? Like, I don't want to just be like, you know, hey, you have to pay me $400 to see me, you know, I, I, I like that I can give back to people. And, you know, hopefully when like COVID dies down, I would love to do like some community stuff and education in our area. Um, if you come down to Huntington on, Beach. Did you mention um, you had a connection with Crohn's? Is that what you said? I, so when I originally had all my symptoms going on and when I was 18 in college, they died, they misdiagnosed me with Crohn's and then they gave okay. me Vicodin. It was Vicodin. And it was crazy, which made me worse. I ended up having to go to the hospital because I didn't, I didn't know what constipation was. Don't worry. We're, we all go through those moments of, of right, silliness. Right, where you're just did, like, we don't did, know what's going on. <laughs> did, yeah, didn't know what constipation was. And then I get to the hospital and I was like, I'm having the worst pain of my life. And, the, and then they were like, when's the last time you went, you had a bowel movement? And I was like, Oh, I think it's been a week and a half. <laughs> and so like, you know, they were like, you're just constipated, but it's, you know, and then finding out after having an endoscopy and a colonoscopy that I had ulcerative colitis, I had bleeding. Oh, um, I had um, the IBS and then I have possible celiacs that it's kind of inconclusive because I was diagnosed with it. But then recently I had a blood test that said I was negative, but at the same time, if you're not, I don't eat gluten or wheat. So your test could be right. a false negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but either, yeah, but anyway, so that's kind of a little bit about me in terms of my own kind of, I, you know, I'm really happy that I have studied what I have and, and have resources like you with in, and I know nutritionists and I have a whole thing where I can manage my symptoms, but um, I really want just to share that with everybody, you know? Well, That's like you one. said, it's your story. It's your passion. Like, yes, it's your business. Yes, you went to school. For yeah. This, but you're not trying to say like, you know, what is the most expensive thing? You know, like, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to circle back to a 15 minute appointment for $25. Like I'm trying to live here in Denver. I'm like there's lots of people I love. and I don't know that that's an option anywhere. But that's awesome. Like even if someone's like, hey, I know I need a longer session, but this is all I can do. And if that works for their budget, like even if they walk away with two or three exercises, or you telling them, hey, purchase this, do this, yeah. do this, do that, like that $25, that 15 minutes could change someone's world. Like that. Yeah. Could be a huge difference until their next appointment. I mean, even if they had to do one 15 minute appointment, I mean, I don't know how often you would do them a week. I mean, that's still quality care, ride or die, someone that cares, right? Like you're coming from a position where you were misdiagnosed, where you're having these issues. And I know myself, I too have been misdiagnosed and it's just like with different things and it's ridiculous. And I also, when you said Crohn's, I was like, oh, I'm one of the lead instructors here in Denver for the Crohn's and colitis for spend four. And so we're oh, wow. the ones that, yeah, we ride the bikes and you guys, other people, team challenge, you love to run. This girl is not about to run. No, no, no. But I will pedal to the metal. The I'll run. I'll run next to you. I, I'll do the running. I love to run. But no, I hear you. Well, whatever you whatever cardio. On the bike. We'll be we'll do it that way. I, I'm in the spin. You do the team challenge. I'll stay over <laughs> and spin four. But it's once again, raising awareness for Crohn's and colitis because many times there's more than one diagnosis, right? And sometimes you get 15 other diagnoses and then you end up at endo. And then sometimes you get these 15 diagnoses and some of them are still very much true. And then endo slapped on top of it. And then you're just like, yeah, oh, dear goodness, what is going on? It's a lot. So like you said, your own personal story is why you do what you do, not only to manage your own health and your own health issues, but because you can relate to other people, you know what it's yeah. like when you're going to an appointment and the doctor's like, oh, it's just all in your head. And you're like, no, because you're like, as a physician, you're like, oh, someone's already told me that. And I know it's not in my head. I knew yeah. that more than that. And so if you guys are looking for some telehealth, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like, <laughs> I haven't heard those prices anywhere else. So I'm like, you better figure it out. You get a couple of DoorDash, got your $25, got your appointment. If you need other ways in the COVID come up, give me a call. 
I will let you know how to get on that hustle because there are options out there, right? You don't want to be on the medications 24 seven, even if you're yes. on the meds, you need the holistic measures for longevity, right? These prescriptions that we're taking, these surgeries, these procedures, these, you know, whatever else, it's not long-term, you have to do it. And if it's a simple stretch, I mean, I, once again, I think I'm just so shocked about the $25 in the 15 minutes, I'm gonna circle back <laughs> for time number three, because just in case you jumped on, oh, do you uh -oh. accept HSA, um, HSA or FSA fines or funds? Oh, um, so, I, with my belly whisperer, I typically do just cash. But what I'll do is if you want to try to bill your insurance, I'll create a super bill and with like, a, I'll add diagnosis codes in my treatment and you can submit it that way. But there is no, I can't guarantee you that you'll get all your money back. Um, and then HSA, okay. um, if you're a local, if you're someone that lives in Huntington Beach and you're looking to go that route, then we do take certain insurances and you can contact me about that. I can send you my my business card for my other job at the clinic. So, so absolutely. Yeah. So that's a perfect segue. Where do people find you? We know that you're on Insta. Is there yeah. a website? I mean, what if someone's like, hey, can I get an appointment this week? Like, are you booked out for all of October? Can you even get us in before the new year? Oh, what is that if you're trying to come like? to the if you're trying to come to the clinic, I'm like, so my, I just got a call from my boss before this actually. And they said they added another evaluation. I have, I'm fully booked like for the next week. But the cool thing is I am going on vacation for a week to Yellowstone this Saturday to Saturday. So I am going to okay. like take a little mental health self-care yes. trip. But in terms of telehealth and um, in-person visits, I mean, I'm getting, it's what's happening is I'm getting a lot busier now that I've just been you know, word of mouth, and then also with everything going on. But no, you can, there's still, I have a schedule that's on my website, www.bellywhisperoc.com. Okay. I also have a link in my bio to my website, and you can go hit schedule appointment, or if you want to like see all the options that I offer, you can hit schedule consultation, and it gives you pricing, different packages. Um, but I have lots of availability. I'm pretty flexible. Um, nice. Yeah. But um, I'm really excited, you know, uh, with everything going on, the support. It's been so nice have, uh, being on your, uh, your Instagram, you know. You're well, such no, a I light every time I see you. I'm like, it's like a talk show. We just got to, we're, we're just branching out right here. Um, we're just doing a little talk I think show, we're too, a yeah, over, a bob we're, bob we're a little too extroverted. We're like a little too extroverted for each other. So we may just like continue on with, and, you know, and just keep talking about whatever. You and know, this something. is good. I was about to say, I feel like. I've been putting it out there. I feel like we've, we're, we're upgrading to a Zoom call, ladies. For you people that just like to hang out on Instagram, you know what? You're going to need to go ahead and download that Zoom app. Do it today. So when we start dropping these Zoom links, you can just hop on. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes it would be awesome to do a presentation. Like I'm doing a presentation, yeah. um, a master class this Wednesday for pelvic health. It's totally free. The link oh, is in nice. my bio. But sometimes, I mean, I'm telling you, when you can get these professionals on your surgeons and people like yourself that are telling yeah. you stuff for free, like you need to get the Zoom app, right? Like it's pretty basic, right? You can get the app, we can do presentations, you can connect. We can also see your smiley faces. You just don't see us and our little dogs barking and all that. Like it's, nice. it's just so much better and way, a better way to connect. So I'm putting it out there, Zoom call, here we come. Get that's, the Zoom app, you're gonna need it. Um, but no, That's it's exactly what I use. I For my tele rehab, I just basically send people the Zoom link and it's really easy and I start the meeting and invite them. And so Zoom is amazing. Which is nice too, because I'm sure as a provider, you could record it and even send them a recording if needed. Yeah. Then they have it to refer to. Once again, did I mention 15 minutes for $25? Okay, I think I did. <laughs> but just in case I did. Uh oh, yeah, my emails. <laughs> my email's going to get flooded. What am I going to do? I, oh, worst case I'm scenario. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what happens when you're doing great things. You're getting referrals. Did I I'm supposed to car I'm supposed right. to carve pumpkins tonight with my husband. We're supposed to put on a, put on like a great movie, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, carve some pumpkins. Well, yes, and so we're not going to be able to get your appointment this evening, but please go okay, to the good. website. What's the website? <laughs> One more time. So feel free to slide or DM, but if you legit want to get an appointment, because you know this is a killer deal, we're all going to be getting appointments. So don't send a DM and then wait and wonder why you didn't get an appointment. Yeah. We're all going to the website. So what's the website? One more time, DM if you need to, but if not, go to the website, book your appointment. She does take insurance. Sounds like she's got some in-office appointments. She can't help you tonight. She's going to be hanging out with her man. Check her on another day. <laughs> so what's the website so they can find that calendar? Yeah, so go ahead and check out everything I have to offer and a little bit about me on uh, www.bellywhisperoc.com. 
And then similarly, you can also email me directly at bellywhisperoc at gmail.com. Nice. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Just send me a message. Well, yeah, no, thanks excited. for having me. Yes, I'm super excited. We're doing a Zoom call. So once again, your homework for tonight with your toolbox, download the Zoom app. LJ's Zoom in, Belly Whisper, we're going over there. You need to have the app. Be ready to roll. Thank you for your time this evening. I will definitely be posting this live. We definitely going to be talking about that $25 special yep. because that is just <laughs> effing phenomenal. Like I'm telling you, when someone's doing that, they're doing it because they care. They are clearly not doing it to rake your, you know, rake your budget or mess up your family budget. They are doing it because they care. And this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be getting help from someone that truly cares, that's been there, done that. Thank you again for coming on. I'm going to post so nice ASAP. Being on. Enjoy the rest of your night with your husband. And yeah, thank you. Have a great Let's night. Figure out when we're going to do that Zoom call and chat. We'll be in touch. All right. Bye, girl. Thanks, everybody.